Good morning, women. I'm so excited. We are halfway through our week together, and I'm just really blown away by the involvement and the ways that you are able to open yourself and really show up in our private retreat space. I find it really, really amazing, and this is one of the reasons why I work mainly with groups of women, for women to have this community that you all are finding so invaluable this week. This is very much the kind of community that I cultivate in the group programs that I run. So I've been hearing a lot, reading a lot about your deep whys, and I'm really loving noticing all of you reading each other's deep whys and commenting on them. I think it's really, really valuable for everyone to kind of hear a little bit about where other women are coming from. And so I want to share with you a little bit about, um, a little bit more about how I started In Arms Coaching, um, which sort of goes into some of my deep whys, and, um, and then we'll move forward into the work for today. So when I became a single sole parent with no other parent uh, in the picture when my daughter was 15 months old, I really reached breaking point. I was um, financially destitute. I was you know, completely overwhelmed physically, emotionally. I was heartbroken and just in the sense of utter betrayal and abandonment. Um, I was waitressing five to six nights a week. I had a baby that I couldn't put down every waking minute that I wasn't carrying plates to and from a table in a restaurant. Um, I had very little support community and, um, and a house with a mortgage that I couldn't afford. And it just really... It was really a whole new kind of bottom. I had hit bottom before, but in very different ways. Um, and the silver lining of that, that bottom hitting, the silver lining of being all alone with this baby was that I could really envision the future in a way that some single parents aren't lucky enough to be able to. And most single parents are still tied, you know, custody wise to another person. And I didn't have that tie, so I could really start from scratch and decide what I wanted our life to be. And starting from, you know, the place of not wanting it to be anything like what it was, I envisioned a life for us that, of course, was, you know, financially stable and abundant. A life where I had freedom of time and flexibility so that I could be with my kid, not have to leave her five or six nights a week when she went to bed, which was really hard on both of us for that time. Um, I envisioned a life where I could feel really good about my work and there were parts of, of my waitressing that I loved, but it didn't make me feel like I was making a difference in the world. It didn't make me feel like I was really helping people from my brilliance. You know, most people can carry a hamburger and a beer to a table, um, but I didn't feel like there was anything special about what I was doing and it didn't fulfill anything in my heart it wasn't part of my mission and vision at all. And so I envisioned work where I made a lot of money really changing people's lives. And, and even more importantly than that, really supporting women in being the catalyst for changing their own lives. Because self-sufficiency is super important to me. I will save myself, I will save my kid if she needs me to, and I'll save any pit bull in the world. Anyone else has to save themselves. And I am really, really happy to help with that, but I'm not about to take responsibility for anyone. So it, it mattered to me that my work be something where I was empowering women and helping women find their own sense of empowerment to change their own lives. Because that was what I was about to do. And that was what I had done many times since my adolescence. So I had these, these deep whys. You know, I wanted to be home with my kid. I wanted to get out of being financially destitute. I wanted to be able to um, be secure enough that I could really reach a hand back and help other women because I knew what it was like to feel at the end of my rope. I knew it so, so, so well. I really did. Um, and those were part of my deep whys. And those were part of what made me really carve out the space every day. You know, we it was it was a slow ladder up. We I let go of the house, I lost the house, I moved back in with my mother for a while who had an extra master bedroom and she was helping me raise my baby. Um, I worked like a dog, I eventually put 
Bella in a private nursery school in my mother's neighborhood, the same one that I went to when I was little. And that gave me two to three hours a day, three days a week to myself. And in that space, in two hours a day, three days a week, I started growing. I started planting the seed for In Arms Coaching. And the thing about In Arms Coaching, and this is something that Shelly said actually in, in her Deep Why post, the thing about in arms coaching, and this is something that I talk to my clients about all the time, there has never been any fucking plan B for in arms coaching. In arms coaching was built to work, and I have made it one of my top number one priorities through where I was when I started it, through raising a kid by myself, through subsequent heartbreaks, moving, moving apartments, moving states, moving apartments again more heartbreak, um, being sick, being tired, none of it has made me let go of my 100% determination that In Arms Coaching will be something that earns me a shit ton of money and helps me help a shit ton of women and makes me feel really good about it every step of the way, almost every step of the way. Some of the steps of the way I haven't felt great, but then I've changed it. And that's one of the differences between women who make it in business and women who don't. You have to be committed. You have to be so committed that you will pull tools out of your toolbox and use them day after day after day, even when you don't feel like it. And this is one of the reasons why Valentine's Day makes me think of my business, because it is a relationship. It's a relationship that some mornings I wake up to and I'm like, oh baby, let me put your shirt on and then go make you a cup of coffee and then let's get back into bed together and snuggle and tell each other about our futures. And some mornings I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, you're still fucking here? Like, really? Can you leave? Can I not see you for a day? But it doesn't matter because every day I wake up and I recommit to in arms coaching and I recommit to this making money and I recommit to battling any blocks and fears and resistances that have stood in my way. And there have been many that have stood in my way of making this happen. And, you know, up until about a year and a half ago, <laughs> My mother was saying, don't you think you should have a backup plan for if this doesn't work? Which, you know, is, is hurtful, but also a little bit funny to me in an ironic sort of way because I am already making way more money than she's ever made. And I've supported myself my entire adult life span, which is something that, you know, a lot, you know, didn't, didn't really happen for her because she didn't really have to. So for her to be like, you know, don't you think you should have a backup plan? I mean, first of all, it says more about her than it does about me, but it's almost made me even more determined to be like, no, there's no fucking backup plan. Like, this is my business. It's going to work. I'm married to it. I married this business in a way that I have not ever committed to anyone other than myself and my kid. And that's why it's making it, because every morning I wake up and I recommit to making this business happen. And it gets easier and easier as my business gets more and more successful, but it was an uphill walk most of that way. Um, so those are a little, a few pieces of my deep why. And this is something that I work really, really deeply with women on. And this is why I've had you do this as a piece of today, because it is so important to know why the fuck you're here. And if you're gonna make your business work, to really understand what it is that makes you committed to it so that that commitment will carry you through the days where you're like, I don't even wanna talk to you today because those days will happen. And if you drop your commitment on those days, your business isn't gonna work. So when I work with women, I keep you connected to your deep why and I keep you motivated to connect on a daily basis with why the fuck you're doing this in the first place and why this is important. And if you don't know, then it's something that we really need to think about, right? Because you're not gonna have the motivation to struggle through the muck if you don't know why you're committed. So for today, my questions for you are, ready to write them down? What is your vision? What's your vision for your business? And number two, what could be possible if you felt so smitten with your business 
that whether you wanted to smack it in the face or make it a cup of coffee, every morning you woke up and recommitted to it. What could be possible if you felt so smitten with your business? That's question number two. And the third question is tell us what a day in a business that you love would look and feel like. Tell us what a day in a business that you love that's really successful would look and feel like. So question number one, what's your vision for your biz? What's your heartfelt vision? Really tell us about it. Question number two, what could be possible if you felt so smitten with your business? And question number three, tell us what a day in your life, in your successful business life would look like and what it would feel like how you would feel when you woke up, how you would feel when you went to sleep. Awesome. I'm really excited to hear your responses. Remember that tomorrow we're going to get on the phone and I'm going to be live via video with you and you're going to have a Q&A period. So you can ask me anything that you want about your biz and what's coming up this week around falling in love with your business again. Um, and at the end, um, some of you I've seen have already been asking about communities like this and how to continue this work and I've had messages and, um, and notes from women who are like, oh my god, this is awesome. How do we keep this going? And my promise to you is that I will not leave you hanging. I have an invitation for you. I have a way to look at the pieces of, you know, connecting in with your value, of finding focus and clarity and keeping that strong and committed and motivated. I have pieces for you around ideal client and how to connect with them and really convey the value of your work, how to stay focused and committed. All of those, I'm not going to leave you hanging and I'm going to tell you about them on our live video call tomorrow. So that's tomorrow at 4.15 Eastern and um, I'm going to put the number up for you tomorrow morning in tomorrow's post. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. I can't wait to see you on Facebook. All right, bye.